In this video series, we will be using ANSYS to analyze a composite quadcopter rotor arm. In part one of this series, we will be importing the geometry into ANSYS Workbench, preparing the geometry using ANSYS Discovery, creating a mechanical model in ANSYS Mechanical, importing composite material properties, and generating a 2D mesh. We'll start by opening a new session of ANSYS Workbench. The ANSYS Workbench interface is arranged into two primary areas, the Toolbox and the Project Schematic. The Toolbox contains the system templates that we will use to build our project, while the Project Schematic is the area of the interface where we will manage our project workflow. To insert our quadcopter geometry, we'll navigate to the Geometry template in the Workbench Toolbox and insert it into our Project Schematic by double-click or drag-and-drop. We'll then right-click on the geometry cell and navigate to Import Geometry to locate our quadcopter geometry file. Once the geometry is imported, it can now be prepared for analysis. Today I'll be using ANSYS Discovery. Once Discovery has loaded, we can review the model. This quadcopter consists of multiple bodies, including the housing, landing skids, blades, and rotor arms. This analysis is focused on the rotor arm only, so I'll isolate it from the rest of the quadcopter. To do this, I'll select one of the rotor arms, right-click, select the body, right-click again, and select Simulate on Selection Only. To remove the rest of the bodies from the workspace, I'll right-click again and select Hide All Suppressed. We've now isolated the rotor arm. Notice that the rotor arm only has one through hole, which is used to connect it to the housing. Since we know the blades will also need a fastener to the arm, we'll add that now. Let's use the same diameter hole for the sake of this analysis. First, I'll measure the existing hole using the measure tool, which shows it to be 15 millimeters in diameter. I'll now use the sketch tool to add a 15 millimeter diameter hole using the center point of the existing circle. From here, a through hole can quickly be created using the pull tool. We now have matching through holes in the geometry. We no longer need the other circles on the rotor face, so I'll remove them now using the Merge Faces tool in the Repair ribbon. We now have a simplified solid body geometry with the correct holes, but since our analysis model will start with a 2D mesh, we'll need to extract a surface to use. To do this, I'll use the Mid Surface tool in the Prepare tab. Left click once to select the component and once more to select the top surface. Click the green check mark to confirm the result. We now have a surface to use for our analysis. Our project schematic currently contains only one item, the rotor arm geometry we prepared in part one. Next we'll create the mechanical model by locating the template in the toolbox and dragging it to the right of the geometry. First, we'll import the composite materials into our project. Double-click the engineering data cell to open it in a new tab. Right-click in the blank space, select Engineering Data Sources, and navigate to Composite Materials to open its contents. In this analysis, I'll be using standard modulus epoxy carbon, both unidirectional and woven, manufactured with the wet layup technique. Select the materials, right-click, and select Add to B2 Engineering Data. Click Engineering Data Sources to confirm that we've added the materials properly. Close the Engineering Data tab to return to our project schematic. Now we need to share the geometry we created in Part 1 with the mechanical model. Drag the geometry cell A2 to mechanical model cell B3 to share its contents. We're ready to generate our mesh. Right-click the model cell, select Edit to open up ANSYS Mechanical. Once ANSYS Mechanical has loaded, we can review the project by expanding the items in the model tree. 
We can see that we've successfully imported the surface we created in part one of this series without including the rest of the quadcopter bodies. We can also confirm that the composite materials have successfully loaded into the mechanical model. Now let's generate the mesh. Right click and select Generate Mesh. We'll start with the default mesh properties. The default mesh sizing is fairly coarse, so let's decrease the mesh size to 5 millimeters and regenerate. Right click and hit Generate Mesh to regenerate the mesh. That looks much better. We're done creating our mechanical model, so let's close ANSYS Mechanical and return to our project schematic in ANSYS Workbench.